One of the major responsibilities of the Forest Service is to ensure a continued supply of timber. Our silviculture program deals with over 75,000 openings. That's over four and a half million hectares or 10% of the forest land in BC. Computers are the only possible way of documenting and analyzing information of this quantity and complexity. Our history record system was established specifically to provide managers with the data they need when they need it. We are committed to making this system the finest in the world, to provide our managers with the information needed to make sound decisions. And you are a critical part of this evolution. The color map of the biogeoclimatic zones of British Columbia is a clear visual statement of the variety of zones and consequently forest types that occupy this province. An opening in any of these forests may result from one of a number of causes. Logging, fire, disease, insects. But all should have the same outcome, to be replaced by a healthy stand of trees which in turn will be available for integrated forest resource use. This, of course, is more than nicety or a good idea. It is a requirement of law under the terms of the Forest Act. Forest managers must assess each opening and prescribe the appropriate treatments to ensure this objective is met. Must the site be planted or will it restock itself naturally are the first questions. And the opening must be monitored over the course of its regeneration and more questions asked. What density of trees will be acceptable? Should the juvenile trees be spaced? Will weeding and brushing be required? Is fertilization called for? The job of making these initial assessments falls to the surveyor, and every year about a half a million hectares will be surveyed to answer these very questions. But the information they obtain is used by a great many people. The district manager and his staff will assess the results of these surveys to determine whether his silviculture activities are successful, what new lands are available for harvest, how his manpower and budget must be allocated to meet forthcoming needs. These same surveys, coupled with the district manager's evaluation, will be used throughout the region and in Victoria to evaluate the state of silviculture in the province. Are our objectives being met? A member of parliament may receive an inquiry in the legislature and he will turn to the Forest Service for an answer. An educator may borrow this data for comparison with the model his students are developing. A forester with a logging company will examine the information and relay it to the economists in his company who must assess the company's future over the next few years. The Forest Service has a responsibility to manage over 4.5 million hectares. We must assess and evaluate a list of possible treatments or stages of treatments that would reach halfway up a coastal Douglas fir. And every summer, hundreds of foresters acquire more information in response to demands that reach far beyond the Forest Service to senior levels of government, parliament, the private sector, and other interests. The history record system was implemented in 1979 specifically to deal with the problem of massive quantities of information which must be recorded, stored and analyzed on relatively short notice. Like any new system, there has been a period of time where some people swear by it and others swear at it. But there is clearly no alternative to a comprehensive computer storage and retrieval system for dealing with the management of BC's forests. Every year has seen improvements in design and efficiency. As would be expected, many of these improvements have resulted from feedback from the users at district and region, for as people become more familiar with the system, they make new demands of it. This familiarity and feedback only serves to improve the system. Let's look at the system from our point of view. We receive the key punch data and feed it into our mainframe computer. At this point, we can again check for errors and process the data to produce a series of some 400 standard reports. Who requests these reports? Just about everybody district and regional staff, senior managers here in Victoria, licensees, members of parliament, the media, academics, you name it. At the same time that we get requests, 
we get complaints. We don't mind. Complaints mean that you're paying attention, and we respond to your comments. In response to your feedback, we are modifying our standard reports, removing some rarely requested ones from the inventory, and developing the capability to produce specialized reports on a variety of silviculture subjects. We're listening. But what's happening at the other end of the line? The history record system makes sense. For me, it's crucial for planning, for basic monitoring, and measuring work accomplishment. There really is no other way of keeping track of all our activities. The biggest question in my mind was how to find the staffing and funds to complete the information requirements. My staff are extremely busy as it is. There have been problems with currency and accuracy of data, but I can do a lot to remedy this. So now I allot human resources and budget for updating the history record forms after the field surveys or treatments have been completed. Occasionally, I'll contract out this work. With the installation of microcomputers in our office, the process is considerably simplified and my confidence in the data has increased greatly. This will, in fact, save us money. Yes, it makes for a busy work schedule, but now I'm getting reliable and meaningful reports. The history record system is complex, but so is silviculture and other interrelated programs. It takes time to develop expertise within my staff, but it is time well spent. What do I see in the future? The production of field recorders to eliminate one more step and increase efficiency another notch. I see the possibility of tying the inventory and silviculture systems together within the same database. Perhaps in future years, the field reports and data can be linked to the computerized geographic mapping and mylar systems so we could highlight treatment areas on the geomaps. The possibilities of the system could revolutionize how we manage our forest lands. District managers and history records branch staff probably have the keenest interest in a smooth flowing system. But there are others, many others, who rely on the system as well. With over 300 terrestrial wildlife species to maintain in British Columbia, the key to wildlife enhancement and protection is habitat diversity. The history record system provides me access to information on forest openings and species composition, both very important as wildlife habitat. I use the Civil Culture History Record System frequently in my consulting projects to undertake problem ana analyses of, of um, specified biogeoclimatic subzones or variants, increasingly at the request of district staff. I find using the system I'm able to identify problems which have occurred in the past and to focus in on these problems and try to um, generate further research. I use the history records to evaluate the silviculture programs in BC and to describe the programs in specific districts. Without the system, I wouldn't be able to complete those projects. The history record information is used to update and strengthen the provincial forest cover database. Inventory staff are working closely with history record staff to improve data compatibility and data integration procedures. We look forward to a fully integrated history record system pest management and silviculture. This will lead us to use the history record system for infestation planning. It's an extra duty to complete the history record forms, but in the long run it's going to save me time, especially when planning next month's surveys or next season's silviculture activities. One of the mandates of the BC Forest Service is to monitor the performance of the forest companies and the Forest Service itself with respect to the reforestation obligations on areas which they log. Uh, with flexible programming support from Silviculture Branch and a properly updated history record system, we've been able to design and produce a history record report especially designed to summarize the reforestation obligations of the companies and the Forest Service. Yes, I've had an opportunity now to use the history record system from uh, both uh, as a, a manager in the regional office and now a manager in the, uh, in the district office and certainly I've found it an invaluable tool uh, at both levels in the organization. As the system improves and we become better aware of our role in it, it becomes a powerful tool for management. 
The history record system is a powerful tool for management. It provides users at all levels of the Forest Service and of outside organizations with a practical, updatable handle on the state of managed forest land in British Columbia. It can save time and money, improving the efficiency and effectiveness of all our silviculture activities. Over 113,000 hectares planted every year. Over 158,000 hectares requiring treatments every year. Over 226,000 hectares harvested every year. It is these activities that we are judged on by ourselves, by industry, and by the taxpayer. The history record system is more than a computer system or a series of numbers and symbols on a form. It is our best and in practical terms only alternative to chaos and error. It requires everyone's efforts to make it work and its work makes everyone better.